Okay, willkommen zum Texas Q&A. Ich äh, freue mich ganz besonders, fast alle der Besetzung hier bekommen zu haben. Bis auf die teuren. Äh, und äh, ja, wenn ihr Fragen habt, fragt. Ich bin ein Dortmund. It's very nice. First, let me practice my new German. Hallo! Hallo! That's it. How did I sleep? I slept great. But of course, I snuck out fairly early. Uh, don't tell the truth. Schöne deutsche Leute fielen down. What he said. He said, thank you to the German people. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> is there a question or something? Afternoon, everybody. Well, I can tell you, it was not real. No, but I died a thousand deaths filming it, and I was only there for a day. Very hard, very hot, and very uh, exciting. But no, it wasn't real. Ed Dean did do something terrible to his mother, but Ed Gwen didn't. Well, she might not say that. <laughs> okay, I, now I have a question. Uh, you are the actors of a movie, of a horror movie. Um, it's called, uh, how is it called? Texas Chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the right movie, isn't it? Can you all this film? Who can this film? Hände hoch, alle Hände. Aha, this is a chainsaw. All right. Okay, I have a question. How is it to be an actor in this movie? Uh, the only thing more difficult than being an actor in this movie is childbirth. <laughs> childbirth. Okay. How do it Childbirth. <laughs> I'd say the movie had its challenges. Remember we didn't have uh, like stunt doubles. We didn't have much time for anything. So most of the stuff was real. And um, a lot of things happened that It might have made it look good in the movie, but it kind of hurt the actors. So, we had a lot of challenges filming. And I believe that's why it's so scary, because a lot of it wasn't faked. For instance, when they cut my finger, and then they gave it to Grandpa to suck the finger. Oh, God. Here we go again. Anyway, I thought that they accidentally cut my finger and because the prop knife wasn't working properly. What I didn't know till about three years ago, on stage, during a question and answer, just like this when someone said, Gunner said, oh, Marilyn, give it up. We didn't use the prop knife. We just didn't, it wouldn't work, so we just went ahead and cut your finger. So in that cinematic moment when you see my face go, <laughs> it's because they really cut my finger. 
Um, making chainsaw was very difficult and we worked under very difficult conditions. But we were all young actors and filmmakers and we loved what we did, so we did it. Now, if someone were to ask me to work like that today, I'd tell them to go fuck themselves. So, yeah. You know, I'd say, what are you, out of your mind? <laughs> you know, but we were in our 20s, and we were making our first film. Which, so, which year was it? Which year? Which year was it? In the year? 1973. 1973, okay. It's, 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 Long time ago. Um, I had the best time of my life making this movie. It was a lot, of, a lot of fun and a great time. And here we are, almost 40 years later, and uh, still having a good time. But I wanted to say that. Uh, Marilyn was right, we kept getting hurt on the movie. And uh, one of the hardest scenes I had to shoot was not doing anything, laying on the table as, as Leatherface cut me up to make sausage out of me. Because I had to lay there and not breathe, and I could feel the hot oil coming off of the chainsaw on my face, and also the, the splinters coming out of the table kept hitting me in the face and because the, the actual chainsaw was inches from my head to get the right angle. So it was the hardest thing for me to do, nothing. Well, I had the toughest job on the film because I had to wear the red shorts. <laughs> and it was really difficult because you weren't supposed to wear short shorts in 1973 in a film. And I've paid the price ever since. For 25 years, I denied wearing them or being in the film. And then finally I came out, and now I can't shut up about them because I wish I had them. And I wish I had that same butt, but I don't. <laughs> so we, we, we did suffer a lot making the film, but I did have the coolest costume, and I was the envy of everyone because it was very, very, very hot. But we did, we did enjoy it, and later, and now, we get to meet people and come out and visit with you, and, you know, we, we frankly have a great time doing it, and we like talking about the film, because it, it is very interesting if you go back and you watch it now, you'll find out that you don't see any blood, you don't see any violence, and that is something that people leave there and they think, oh, but I saw the hook go in her back. But you actually never saw it. So if you go back and you rewatch it, you know, now, I think you're going to see why it was so unusual. Because you had characters and you had the plot, you know, you cared about the characters. It wasn't about the violence, it was about using your imagination. And one last thing, at that time, because many of you are too young to know this, but at that time, Alfred Hitchcock's movie Psycho had just come out. And Psycho was based on the same killer that this is based on, Ed Gein. And he was obsessed with Ed Gein, and that's what Psycho was about. Norman Bates was based on that. So if you will look at that and you find out that he didn't show violence either, you're going to see a lot more when you watch the film next time. And thank you so much for coming. Was sagen Ihre Kinder, Neffen oder Familie heutzutage über den Film? Was sagen die Kinder oder ihre Neffen oder die ganze Familie heutzutage über den Film? What, what do your children uh, tell you about your film? Do they like it or don't they like it? What, what does your children think about the film? Every Christmas. He has 11 children. I have a lot of children. 
Arizona. There's something in our water in Texas, I don't know. All of my children, every Christmas, they love this film so much. So much they love this film. I get a brand new box of pens to sign with. Is this on? Um, my son saw it a number of years ago. He's still in therapy. He has his own therapist. He goes once or twice a week. And I hope in another few years he'll get over it. But it's an honor to be here. And uh, after all these years, it's great to see all of you. How many people, by the way, have seen Chainsaw here in the audience? Okay. That makes me feel good. I don't know if you remember me, my hair wasn't gray then. <laughs> and um, I get killed, I'm next to the last to get killed, and I get killed with a sledgehammer. And that's almost 40 years ago, and I'm still getting headaches from that scene, so. But thank you very much. Um, my daughter, um, I didn't let my daughter see the film until she was 14 years old. I guess I was kind of an overprotected father. She's quite proud. She's quite proud. And uh, she lives in New Zealand now. And she writes me once a week and asks when Chainsaw 3D is going to be released in New Zealand. So she, she thinks it's cool, you know? So my daughter, uh, Taylor, thinks it's absolutely hysterical that anybody would want my autograph. And it's, it's very, very, very silly to her. But then at the same time, she tells all of her friends that her dad is in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. I have no children. They ask me nothing. somewhere that the smell on set was extraordinarily disgusting because uh, Gunnar Hansen only had this one costume and uh, because of that particular room where all the chicken bones and all that was in. Could you describe that smell? Well, the, the, the smell was so bad because they had to put paper, thick paper, over the windows so that the light wouldn't come through because we were shooting a scene at night and it had to remain night for 22 hours. And so they couldn't have light coming and going. So now there's no air entering the room or leaving the room. And they took real chickens ahead and nailed it to a board and put it on the table right in front of us. You can see the photographs. We're all in the photograph. The chicken head is here and we're all going, and the director and the producer on the other side of the camera going, Wow, they're doing great. Look at those faces. We have such good actors. <laughs> and because the smell is coming. <laughs> I have to remind you that they should never forget the head cheese. I remember staring at the table like between tables. Not only looking at the chicken, but how sickly it looked and disgusting. <laughs> I don't know, but it's certainly nasty under the lights. No, seriously, I think head cheese uh, comes from, uh, you know, German butchers and sausage making uh, tradition. Because uh, they boil the head and pour it in a loaf pan and let it gel up. And anyway, it was hot and really, really, really smelly. And very hot and very smelly. And uh, but the heat, it, it was already, the ambient temperature outside was already probably hovering around 100 degrees, and then we had uh, probably 12 to 13,000 watts of light blasting on us in that house with no ventilation, so it got really hot really fast, so as soon as you cut the scene, everybody ran outside, where it was, all, where it was 98 degrees out there <laughs> to catch a breeze. 
they had it so easy in the house where we had it hard was in the van. They don't know anything about the van. The van was 110. <laughs> it was so hot. <laughs> and yo, oh, that's right, that's right. And we all only had one costume. So it was what it was, and everybody had to get along and do the best that they could do. But it, we were not acting when we went by the uh, <laughs> Hit by the uh, the cow uh, pastures, you know, the van, the slaughterhouse. That's what it was. Yeah. Anyway, I'm a. I'm a farmer. Sign for I'm a farmer. Wie war die Resonanz in Amerika, als der Film in den 70er Jahren rauskam? Weil Sex und Gewalt da in den 70er Jahren eher noch verpönt waren. Also wie sind die Leute mit Ihnen umgegangen als, als Schauspieler, wie der Film rauskam? How did the, the people get on with you after the movie uh, has uh, brought out? As you as, you know, uh, whether any um, hang on, let's start again. <laughs> when the movie first came out, and the people recognized you on the streets, how were they reacting to you then? Did they see you in a different view? Because you were the psycho, and Gunnar was the, you know, the butcher. So, what happened after that? This is my real voice. This is the way I normally talk. But because of the movie, they only do it from that point. So I could never speak like this again. It was very sad. <laughs> you can't say, I'm gonna kill you. It doesn't work. I had a great, uh, 
I was driving to Houston. I'd never seen the film, and I was really worried about my butt being all across the screen in the red shorts. I was afraid my mother or my aunt might see it. I'm driving to Houston in my VW bus with my girlfriend. We've been out the night before drinking and partying. It's 19, you know, it's the 70s. So we're driving along in my VW bus, and my girlfriend says, oh, look, hitchhiker. She said, do you want to pick him up? And I said, oh, he looks weird. <laughs> Same thing I said in the movie, right? And I have my sunglasses on, no makeup, which is illegal in the state of Texas, by the way, for a woman not to have her makeup on. So we do pull over, and the guy gets in the van. And we're driving along, and the guy starts talking about a movie he went to the night before. We had what were known as drive-in movies, where you go in your car, and you watch the movie on a big screen from your car, right? So this guy said, oh man, I went to see this movie last night. It was effing this and that. Oh my God, they hang this chick on a meat hook. And I'm driving along and I'm, you know, really concerned about my acting and what people are gonna think. And I don't say anything, I have my sunglasses on, you know. Finally, I'm waiting for him to say something good about the girl in, on the meat hook. Maybe he'll, you know. So finally, I said, so you really like the movie, right? And he said, oh, God, yeah. So I pulled up my sunglasses and I turned around to the back and I said, do you recognize me? And he said, I said, I'm the girl on the meat hook. I thought I was going to have to give the guy heart palpitation, you know, resuscitation. So that's my story. We would like to thank Eric Lee for having us here for this wonderful show. Thank you. Okay, das war die Texas Hensing Massaker Cast von 1979. Oh! Oh,